selecting the brain as an adaptive advantage to make tools and use those to survive. While this transformation was happening from the gracile Australopithecines into the Homo uh, over a period of about 500,000 years, you still had these robust Australopithecines that were existing. Um, and in fact, they were getting even more robust. They were getting more hyper-robust is what we call it. So you had Australopithecus Ethiopicus uh, and you had Australopithecus boise. Uh, which existed in Ethiopia and Tanzania and Kenya from about 2.5 million years ago for Ethiopicus and uh, 2.3 to 1.2 million years ago for Boise. And these had very, very prominent uh, um, sagittal crests, very wide faces with strong cheekbones, very big jaws and teeth, uh, and they uh, had... Um, uh, small, apically worn canines, so they were specialized uh, seed and grass eaters. Um, they were coexisting with these more gracile forms and Homo, in fact. So uh, Homo habilis uh, starts to appear at about 1, 1 million years ago, maybe a little bit earlier, and that seems to overlap with some of these uh, later uh, robust Australopithecines. Now, that's the story from East Africa, and that's where we get most of our information from, because the Oldowan Gorge, which is actually where we get the, the name Oldowan for the t tool technology, these pebble tools. Um, there's another hotspot that's been emerging, which is in South Africa. Um, and uh, there are a couple of uh, robust forms uh, there from about three to two million years ago, Australopithecus africanus, uh, which had was also bipedal, it was uh, as all Australopithecines are. It had small non honing canines and large premolars and molars. And then Australopithecus robustus uh, from about 2 to 1.5 million years ago, which also had small non honing canines, very large premolars and molars, and was also bipedal. Now, these don't appear to have been on our line. And so it seems as though the picture in Africa is a little bit more complicated. We've got a, a pretty clear picture of, of evolution taking place in East Africa, but how this connects to the South African examples, we're not sure. But sure enough, uh, there is actually um, an, another gracile form. So the same sort of split that we see in East Africa between the robust forms and the gracile forms also seems to be taking place in, uh, in South Africa. Um, and the gracile form from South Africa is called Sediba. And uh, Sediba has very ho uh, homo-like features. The brow ridge is reduced, uh, the face is flatter, um, the, uh, it's not as wide of a face as well, um, the, it has smaller teeth, uh, its pelvis and hand were more like that in a human than in other species of Australopithecine. However, the foot was weirdly more chimpanzee-like, um, especially in, in its heel. So it's this weird combination of things. Um, and, and also, uh, it seems as though uh, they had a diet more similar to Artipithecus. So while Sediba kind of looks like more like a human... It seems like it's on a different trajectory, a different line coming from a different place, and we're not exactly sure where um, uh, where this fits in human ancestry. But it's most likely not to be directly related to us, but a similar sort of transition from uh, one direction being robust and one direction being gracile, but in another region. And so the picture of evolution of the of Australopithecines in Africa is far more complex than just simply a straight line between Artipithecus to Homo. Um, there's a, 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 but I think if you can remember one thing from this chapter, it's that uh, there were Australopithecines were a diverse genus of creatures that were finding different ways to survive in different environments, and these fall into two general categories, the robust and the gracile, and it's from the East African gracile forms, especially Australopithecus garhi, that Homo, our genus, seems to have derived. And this is most importantly 
uh, established through the fact that tool use starts to emerge uh, with Australopithecus garhi, because that is exactly what we see our genus starting to use uh, in the about one million years ago as well. Okay, that's it for this chapter. So um, I'll pick it up on the next when we start talking about um, our genus. We're coming close to us now.